Hello, my name is Mike, and that is a bike. But that's not the topic of this episode. You know, last episode, you guys watched me unload this fine, long-roofed vehicle from my trailer. Um, and so I've got some stuff ordered. I've got the service manual ordered so I can get the correct specifications and find out what special tools I'll need to order. That's going to take some time. I also ordered a transmission jack. You see, I've, I've got the hoist. I can lift it up in the air, but, well, I'm not particularly strong. And even if I don't remove and replace the transmission entirely, if I rebuild it in the car, I still need to be able to raise and lower the engine cradle and so forth to be able to, to get in there and do all that. And I don't have a transmission jack of the type that goes underneath a hoist. And you know what they say, your hoist is only as good as the tools under it. They, they don't say that? Okay, well that's what I say. Your hoist is only as good as the tools that are under it. So of course I bought the cheapest transmission jack I could find on eBay. So, you know, it'll probably get the one job done before it fails completely and drops a heavy object on my foot and crushes it. But that's okay, because even if I have to wear a cast on my foot, I'll have a nice car to cruise around in. Assuming, of course, that it fails on the second job, not the first job. But I digress, which I do a lot of. Anyway, while we're waiting for that to arrive, uh, we made a run to the junkyard and we were successful in finding a couple of components. Never know what treasures you'll find in a junkyard. I'm looking for any 80s or early 90s GM A-body long roof. And sure enough, we have a Chevrolet Celebrity long roof. A little rough, but it's got a roof rack and it's got the rear license bracket I need. We got ourselves a roof rack over here. And we've got ourselves a license plate backup panel assembly or tailgate. So we can install those, although I'm also waiting on some well nuts that I ordered. Well nuts are those little rubber nuts that go in the holes in the roof so that when you tighten them down, they, they collapse and they seal those holes as well as hold the rack in place. So I can't really do that yet. And then I ran into some other small minor repairs and so forth. Cosmetic cleanup type stuff that we're going to do in this car while we're waiting on the bigger uh, stuff that takes longer to get here, so stick around. Somewhere in a dusty, dirty back alley in western Arizona, not far from historic Route 66, is an old fart trying to cram a square peg into a round hole. He'll work on anything, just as long as it's got at least two cool wheels. Like many of my projects, well, didn't have keys. It does have an ignition key, it does not have a door key, so I don't I don't dare lock it. And I was thinking, well, I'm gonna have to pull one of the door lock cylinders out and take it and get a key coded for it. Uh, and on this particular door panel, well, it's quite a job. I mean, we've got seat belts and, and window switches and door handles and just a lot of stuff. And I was kind of reluctant and I thought, well, maybe it's easier to pull the cylinder out of the hatch. Now fortunately, because this is a going to town rig, it's got a remote release button in the glove box so the hatch can be opened without the key. And somebody's been doing handy work on it, as you can see. So I thought I would take that one out. This panel comes off a little bit easier, right? And then I noticed something really cool. This, this has a lock in it. So I took that lock cylinder out. <laughs> it was just one clip, popped right out. And I was able to get door keys made for it. So that's a win, and I didn't really have to work at it. 
Okay, so that was easy. That works. Put my tools here. Let's see if the other cylinders function. Okay. Glass opens. The piece is falling off. Perfect. Let's see if I can. And how about the gate? Oh yeah. Okay there. Alrighty. I need to fix it. Got one of those. And see if our door cylinders are functional. Oops, right side up, stupid. Yay! Lock and unlock. Alright. That's one less thing to worry about. And looking through the car, I noticed that there was a, a fuse out. I kind of wonder, well, why would you take the fuse out of the fuse box? The only one that's missing is the stop hazard fuse. thought maybe they took it out because that high mount brake light was taken apart. Put it in and I noticed that immediately hazard flashers come on. Ah. On closer observation, the knob for the hazard switch is not only gone, but, but the holes... The hole is damaged. It's the little canabi won't thread into it because it's broken. So very likely I'm going to have to replace the entire turn signal switch. And I also notice that well, <laughs> I got the steering wheel is not supposed to not supposed to do that. So there's an upper bearing problem. Perhaps the lock plate circlip has come loose. Don't know. And I'm, I'm missing a small cover back here. So, another thing I'm going to have to do is, is go into the steering column and try to figure out what it's going to take to put all that stuff back straight. I also noticed some tools laying about, and there's an odd assortment of nuts and bolts and washers and clips and things. It's kind of weird. Not sure what this is all about. What I found particularly interesting was this bolt. We're doing some custom work here. Don't know if these actually came out of this car somewhere. I think as we go, we'll, <laughs> we'll find out. I scored this at the junkyard.
so let me show you what we got yeah the, the plastic that's on the other end of this screw I put in here is is broken I could reach in there and shut the hazard flasher off with an object but it, it needs a new turn signal switch but what's more notable is this cut yellow wire here there's a device that's supposed to be in here between the horn ring and the lock plate called a clock spring. And the clock spring allows us to have a constant electrical connection with our airbag. And when I pulled it out, I think I pointed out the fact there was absolutely nothing connected to this connector here. So there's a wire harness that plugs into this, goes through this clock spring device, and then goes through the column to another connector on the other end. So with that missing, there was excessive play between the lock plate and this tensioning spring, and, and that's why there was nothing holding that bearing into place. The bearing seems to be okay. It's just when this spring is not here, well, there's, there's a bearing down in there that needs to see tension on this little cup here. Otherwise, it, it, can, it can wobble around in there quite a bit. So, so we'll get those ordered. We'll order a turn signal switch. We'll order a clock spring. And it had the wrong retaining snap ring, the wrong kind of snap ring. That one probably works, but we'll we'll try to get the right type, which is just like a regular C-clip type. <sighs> you know, the parts, they're flowing in at about the same rate as my bank account is flowing out. Ooh, look what came in. Well, nuts. You tighten the nut, the rubber collapses, and seals the opening.
tailgate's way better than it was when I got it here. Uh, I just need to round up a couple of tail light lenses and a new Buick emblem. She'll look, uh, she'll look pretty good. I think I'm going to take all that tint off too because, well, I don't particularly care for it and the tint on this vehicle is all coming apart. Alright, so this is the first time we got her up in the air. And again, I'm, I'm waiting on stuff. So I thought I'd take a little look around. It's a typical California slash Arizona vehicle. Virtually no body rot, a little bit of surface rust, but nothing, nothing to worry about. Structurally, she's pretty sound. Something I noticed, she's got this bracket here attached to the frame. One here and one on this side as well. Looks like it was set up for tow bar at, at one point in time. Oh, this, this is me. The hood release cable was questionable, so I attached this as well, so I can still open the hood. I'll, once I get a new hood release cable, I'll, I'll do away with this. But this is this is so that I don't have to fight it to get it open. Um, got a little bit of an oil leak. Looks like the oil pan, maybe. Not too bad. There's my transmission, the title of our video, 4T60. But this one should be an E. Maybe it's not an E. I'll have to look that up. Some of these were electronically controlled, some were still completely hydraulic. Pretty sure it's an E though. The mechanical aspects of it are going to be the same, regardless. Uh, not too shabby looking. Looks like the CV boots are okay. They tend to wear out pretty quickly here in the southwest. The rubber gets kind of dry rotted. But they're okay. Now the guy, when well, I should say, the gal sold it to a guy. The gal that went to the uh, motor vehicle department with me was the last known registered owner. She sold it to this fellow because it didn't run, and then he sold it to me. So there was a middleman in between, basically. And the middleman, well, he did this. The car wouldn't start because the fuel pump had gone out, and he flat-backed the fuel tank on this. And you know what? I, I don't envy him. I mean, I've, I've done these gas tanks and uh, and fuel pumps with a hoist and with uh, a hydraulic transmission jack and they're a pain in the ass anyway. Uh, so what he did because, <laughs> look at these straps. Uh, so what he did because he couldn't get the darn straps in place properly because they are a bitch uh, to fight with uh, even when you have the right equipment. So what he did is he used extended reach fasteners. Uh, no, those aren't factory. These should bolt all the way up to there. But then he was able to actually get it in there and, and hold it in place. And as a result, well, his, his hose doesn't quite reach. It's a little short. We can fix all that. That's not a big deal. I did notice, though, so he put new fuel lines in, a new fuel filter. So he did that part of it right. Uh, you know, this canister hose is starting to come off. It's, it's all pretty minor stuff. We can get all that squared away pretty easily. You know, I thought I was smelling gas the other day. And I was. There was gas fumes. It's because there was no gas cap on it. So he, he forgot to put the gas cap back on. But he did get it installed to the point where it works. So the engine starts and runs. So that's that's good. So undercarriage, yeah, it's all right. He's a very questionable wheel and tire on this side. This one's not too bad. Got a little dry rot. And it's actually in the car. The, the mate to the other three is in the car still. So we'll get that put on. Probably got taken off. It's probably got a flat. Uh, again, we'll address that as well. So, so when I talked about this transmission, if we go in through this side here, this side cover can come off, and you can get to the valve body and all the internal components. What you got to do is you got to unbolt the cradle from here and up here, and then you can let this whole side of the cradle down. Leave it attached at this side, and the whole thing tips down at an angle. You can go crawling right up inside there and you can get to the transmission components. So that's that's going to be our plan when stuff arrives.
I got the how-to book in the mail the other day, and uh, I can look up all the transmission stuff, and I can find the part number of the tool I need to stack all those spinny things into place. I have the different torque specs and stuff like that. So that'll help. It's this thing right here I need so I can, you know, stack up gears and wheels and clutches and put them back in properly. Otherwise, they just fall right out. Well, look what FedEx brought me today. It's rather heavy. I had to use a dolly to get it over here. And there's a lot of loose parts inside. I'm sure some assembly is required. Probably came from Ikea. You know, I'll, I'll promptly lose the instructions and have to figure out how to assemble it. But, if it's what I think it is, that is our transmission jack. That'll be helpful. Well, looky! I managed to assemble it without any instructions. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? That'll make my life easy. Does it go down? Oh, yeah. It goes both ways. That's a win. Woohoo! Having exhausted the resources at my closest self-serve wrecking yard, I traveled quite a ways to other junkyards in Arizona. But you know, Arizona's a big state. They did have a few centuries, but none of them were long roof. Went to another wrecking yard, also the internet showing having centuries. I went to see if any of them were a long roof century. So we headed out and uh, I did find a car that I was able to get the steering column parts I needed, but in addition to my painful back, I managed to get some glass in my arm as I crawled under the seat in the car with the broken windshield. And then there it was, the century long roof. Now I could finally get the taillights I need. Awesome. Somebody had already removed the taillight for me and... Okay. But however, the right side was good, so I grabbed it. It did have a good right side tail light, so I'm gonna go ahead and install that one. After driving all around the state looking for parts for this wagon, I'm finding that these wagons are getting pretty, pretty rare. Uh, there's the turn signal switch and the what they call a clock spring and I can put my steering column back together so that'll give me a couple more things to finish up all the small stuff before uh, the remaining tools that we need to do the transmission job up here so they're, they're due here any day so let me get these put in real fast and uh, we'll talk more about this car
episode of the Long Roof Buick Project. Uh, we've done as much as we can. We've we fixed a lot of that little small stuff. And you might be asking, why are you spending so much time and trouble and money? Well, not much money, but all that energy into something that doesn't even move. Well, that's how confident I am that I can get that transmission going. If not, well, I found out these things are rare. I just part it out. I'll still get all my money back. Well, anyway, that's it for this episode. Come on back in the next episode. By then, we should have the remaining tools that we need to go into that transmission and get the transmission repaired. So, come on back for that episode. Thanks for watching.